everyone. Welcome. Thank you for joining us today. We are here to make some really fun jewelry and accessory projects with UV resin. So if you're new to us, if you're new to jewelry crafting or new to resin jewelry crafting, you're in the right place. We're going to break it all down for you, show you the supplies that you need, the techniques that you need, and just everything you need to do to get started with this craft. My name is Stephanie Menor, and I am happy to be your teacher today. So let's switch to the top-down camera and take a look at some of the projects that we're going to create together. So first we have these bangle bracelets and ah, this is my favorite one. I'm so excited to make this and I'll show you how to achieve this kind of confetti look. Uh, then we have our red, white, and blue glitter bangle. Um, then we have a little star keychain. And you could easily change these stars into pins or earrings or charms or any number of things. But here we've put them together as a simple keychain. And then we have some rings. Uh, here we go, red, white, and blue. Some rings. These are very, very simple to make. And we're actually going to start with this ring project. Finally, we have the hardest project. I saved that one to show you last. It is this little flag keychain that is made with resin and beads. So those are seed beads that are in there and they are encased in resin. So this is a great way to achieve a hand beaded look without knowing how to hand bead with beads. <laughs> so this kind of is a little cheater method to get this look without all the pain and frustration. So this will be the last project that we do, but let's get started. So let me walk you through the supplies that you need. Um, you need some silicone molds. So for example, this is the mold that the rings came out of. It makes several different sizes of rings. We're also gonna use some other molds or other shapes. You can see how clear you can see how clear these molds are. This really helps with the UV resin because UV resin cures with light. And so opaque molds don't work for that because the light just can't reach all the places it needs to reach. We also have a UV lamp. So hit the button, it turns on very similar to what you may have seen at the nail salon. This is a nine watt UV light. It powers on and off with a USB cord. So it plugs in um, to, uh, to the wall that way. Um, what else? We have some findings. You're going to need maybe some keychain findings and some jump rings, some jewelry tools for that. Finally, we have some sea beads. And underneath all of this is this blue thing that you're looking at. This is a silicone mat and I use this to keep my work surface clean. And you'll notice that a lot of things are made with silicone. And that is because silicone, um, sorry, I'm opening this package. This is, this is the package. I wanted to show you what it looks like in the store. This is what it looks like in the store. I'm opening a new bottle with you guys now. Comes with instructions. Make sure you read these really important stuff in there. Um, and this is what the bottle of resin looks like. This is what you use with all of these tools. Um, and you'll notice that it is a hard type resin, not, oh, that's not focusing. Okay. Maybe I'll keep it down here. There we go. That's focused better. Um, so you'll notice it's a hard type resin. 99% of UV resin out there is hard type. Um, just a sec. Okay. Are you guys seeing me, me crooked now? Or is that just yes. my view? It is. Okay. <laughs> All right. One technical moment here. And let's fix that. Hmm. Okay. Well, doesn't seem to want to switch for me. So, uh, gosh. We'll get right back to it, guys. Hang on. I'm just figuring this out because my phone switched orientations and doesn't want to switch back. 
Um, I think right. if you um, if you exit the session and come back in, it should go back to normal. Okay. I don't want to do that. So let's try to just do it this way. Okay. <laughs> I'm um, sorry, guys. I don't want to exit out completely, um, but I don't see another way. Usually you just turn the phone and it changes to landscape. And in this case, it's it's just not doing it. So I don't know how to manually make it. So I'm sorry, this class is going to be in portrait mode. All right. Okay, where were we? We're talking about UV resin. So this is the bottle. When you first get it, it is sealed here. So you're gonna wanna take that seal off. I think the best way to do that is with some pliers. And so while I'm getting this bottle ready, I'll talk to you a little bit more about UV resin. So if you've used epoxy resin before, that's the kind of resin that you mix two parts and you have to be very precise about the way that you mix it. Um, this this is not that. This already comes ready to go in this bottle, and it has like a precision kind of a cap here, and you pour it right out, and it's ready to go. Um, all right, let's get started with the very first project, which are those rings. So this is my ring mold, and you can see maybe it has several different sizes, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten 10 size. Okay. And we are going to use these molds to create our desired ring. So first let's add some color because I want to make a blue ring. So I'm going to take the UV resin. It goes straight into a silicone cup. This is just a silicone mixing cup. You can see it's very flexible. UV resin does not stick to silicone when it's cured. That's why some of the things we're working with are silicone. Um, and next I need to tint that and that's using a tint that's like this. And these tints, especially the blue, are very, very strong. So I'm just gonna put one good drop in there and life is better with glitter, I truly believe. So we are going to put some blue glitter in there as well. And you can put as much glitter as you want. Uh, the only thing about overdoing it with the glitter is you're going to have to cure it for longer. So UV resin, as I said, cures in UV light. So if that light can't reach, where it needs to go, um, it's just gonna take longer. You kind of have to hit it from different angles and let it cure a little bit longer. So you can, you know, you can make it very, very glittery, but just keep that in mind. I like what this looks like. It's a nice royal blue. You can see it still has a little bit of transparency to it. All right. I uh, also have a paper towel off here to the side so I can take my wooden stick and wipe it off and make sure that I'm keeping my work surface semi-clean. All right, so we're gonna get ready to pour this directly into the mold. Um, now, what size? I think I'll do size seven here. And you're, this is a uh, <laughs> trust the process moment because this particular ring mold it's a very small shape that you have to pour the resin into. Most of our molds have a wide shape, like for example, this mold, this, this moon here. It's very easy to just pour into that. A shape like this, you're pouring into a very confined space. So it, it might get a little messy, but hang with me and it'll all come together in the end. So you can see I'm just kind of pouring it on there. I'm squeezing the silicone bowl so I can be a little more precise with it. And then I wanna go in with a wood stick and I'm kind of poking and prodding at this and I'm encouraging that resin to flow into the channel of the ring here. And I can see that it hasn't flowed all the way. See that void right there? So I know that I need more resin.
And I sometimes like kind of poke this in there. Um, we have a question in the chat and I do encourage you guys ask your questions in the chat. I try to see them here and we have some folks on the line that are gonna answer your questions for you. And the question was, can you use food coloring? And to be honest with you, I don't know the answer. I've never tried it myself. Um, the problem that you have with colorants not meant for resin is that they don't assimilate 100% into the resin. That blue that I put in there, it dispersed through the resin. So if it's not, um, the reason we recommend this is because it, it doesn't, um, it, it just works better. <laughs> the food coloring you may find that when you pour that in, uh, it like stays in little globs. It doesn't fully assimilate into the resin itself. All right, so because this is clear, I can lift it up and I can see underneath and kind of see, I'm looking for, for bubbles and I can see a bubble right here. I don't know if you guys can see it. And it's just an air bubble where the resin hasn't gotten in there yet. So I'm just kind of encouraging it to get in there. And because these molds are so flexible, I can take the stick and kind of push this to the side and that this motion is going to get rid of any like bigger air bubbles that we have in there. Okay. All right. Now here, my little trick of doing this is once I have the resin where it needs to be, I like to kind of wipe off the top and then with a damp paper towel, what you can do is here, let me get a new one. little bit of a paper towel. You can go across the top of it with just no pressure. And don't worry about this extra resin that's in there. You'll see what'll happen. Okay, so let me just toss that. And now we are ready to cure this. So curing times with UV resin. Perfectly clear UV resin with no glitter, no tint, no anything probably only needs about two minutes under the UV light. But because we've added tint and because we've added glitter, I, I wanna let this go maybe three minutes, maybe even four minutes. Um, to the question in the chat, I used a damp paper towel. You should use a damp paper towel. I didn't have a damp paper towel right here at the moment. So I used a dry one. Either one will work. I just feel like the damp one kind of glides across the, the surface a little easier. All right, so this is going to go, I'm going to put that under there for maybe about three minutes. Um, UV resin also will cure in sunlight. I mean, that is the ultimate source of UV rays, right? Uh, so if it's a sunny day and you're near an open window, you can put it on the windowsill, you can take it outside. And within five, 10 minutes, you will have a beautifully fully cured piece. And I'm just turning this a little bit and I wanna make sure that it's just kind of hits all angles. So this lamp ran for one minute. You can see it turns off automatically after that one minute. I'm gonna turn it back on again. And while we do that, I am gonna show you some examples of rings, other rings that we've made and kind of how we can, how we can make them fancy. So here's a ring that we made. And when it came out of it, we put this little flower on top and glue that on. Or a little gem. This is from a different mold. This was from like a dome ring mold. We were trying to achieve kind of like a cloudy marbly kind of a look here by pouring two different colors. Have so many rings over here that we've made. Here's another good example of sort of the marbly effect that you can get with UV resin. So you mix up two different colors, pour them in and kind of swirl them together. And then this butterfly is actually a separately molded piece out of UV resin and we just connected the two to create a focal. All right, so that turned off again. And sometimes what you'll see people do is after a couple minutes, they'll flip it over to get the backside. And for dark things, I do recommend doing that because 
likely is these these rays have not reached the bottommost layer of this mold. All right, a little more show and tell. This one is very fancy. Using the um, dome mold, we put some dried little, these aren't flowers, but they are little, hmm, I don't know. I guess they are a type of flower, but it's more like a stick. Kind of looks like coral, like that one. And of course, no UV resin project is done unless you're getting out the glitter. So this one uses gold glitter flakes. All right. So this has gone for two minutes, three minutes, and this is what we have. The first thing you'll notice is that it's a little warm and that is natural. This curing process, the um, byproduct of it is heat. It's a chemical reaction that's taking place there and um, it creates some heat. So uh, I always like to wait maybe, you know, a minute or so it'll start to cool down. But you can see just from me pressing on it, like it's cured in there and it pops out quite easily like that. That's exactly what you get. Now I can still feel this feels a little sticky to me. So I'm gonna put it down on my work surface and just go at it again with the light. Cause I just felt a little stickiness. And then this is what my mold looks like. The way to clean a mold is, and I actually have some residue from a past project here. Uh, the best way to clean this mold is scotch tape. You can use soap and water to get any dust or extra glitter off, but getting these pieces off, I find that using tape like this is just the easiest method. This is also great for picking up loose bits of glitter that, you know, stays everywhere. And so now we have a clean mold ready for next time. All right. Just flipping that over. And uh, let me show you on, while that cures all the way, I'm gonna show you our example ring. So this is what the ring comes out looking like. You can see that the part that was down inside the mold, this is the part that was down here. That's like the good side. You're gonna have a perfectly smooth, beautiful side and you're gonna have a side that needs a little bit of help, which is this top side. So it's not perfectly smooth, um, And but here's what you can do. The first thing you can do is if you have a sheet of sandpaper, um, which I don't have here, you can this pretend this is sandpaper, you can lay it down and sand like this and you wanna wet sand it just to reduce the amount of things flying in the air. If you don't have wet sandpaper, you can go in with a, an emery board and just kind of take off any of the high bits here until it's smooth. And then finally, if it still has a little bit of texture on the side, what you can do is take your bottle of resin and kind of make a very thin bead along the top here. And really you're adding a kind of a top coat just on this side. And that'll help per like perfect the ring. Um, if you have an old paintbrush, you can also use that to kind of put a final coat on the ring. All right, and then cure that in place. Now I'm not taking the time to make that process perfect. You can really get in there with a toothpick, getting get in there with your um, paintbrush and make it a perfect top coat. But let's switch back to this one. I'm gonna move this one this way. And I wanna show you all the good, bad and ugly of how it comes out of a mold. So as I was saying, you're gonna have a good side. This is the good side. You can see how perfect that is. And then this is the not so good side. So here's how we fix it. First, I just go in with my thumb and I'm just kind of ripping off any of these extra little bits here and using my thumbnail along the edge here. And that's how I just get off all that little excess that wants to stick. And this one, this one actually isn't so bad. Um, if you have like a detail 
emery board like this one, that really helps to get in the middle of these and sand them, okay? But with just a little bit of work, you're gonna end up with a beautiful finished ring. Let me get these pieces up. Okay, so that is how you create rings. So here we have a red, white, let's add our blue. There we go. So cute, oh, they're so cute stacked like that. All right, so those are the basics. Let's apply the basics in these bangles. So the bangle mold is very, very similar to that ring mold, just super size, and it only comes in one size. But you can see the transparent aspect of these molds. There are plenty of silicone molds out in the world. I'll show you another one. Like this is a candy mold. It's also silicone. This will not work with UV resin. It's something about the opaqueness. It doesn't allow that light to get all the way through and it'll make the cure kind of funky. All right, so I think you can understand how to make this bangle. We've used three different mixes, mix them up separately, separate colors, and poured those into the bangle at the same time. But what I wanna show you is how to make this confetti style. Can anyone guess? how we did this. I don't know if we have any uh, repeat visitors here to our classes. You may know because I love this technique. Uh, we use the same technique to create hoop earrings, this kind of confetti technique. This is also came, came out of a mold and then you add the metal piece afterwards. But those little pieces come from scraps of resin. And I always keep my scraps. These are my patriotic scraps, but here's my other scrap bag. And these scraps come from my mixing bowls. So when I've mixed a bunch of a color and don't quite use it all, you're always left with a little bit in the bottom of the bowl. And the, the, the best way to use it is to use it on a project. But if you don't have a project that you're doing, you can cure it in place and then you're left with this little bit of cured resin and I put that in my bag and I save that for a rainy day. And the rainy day is now. So what we're going to do is take these scraps. You can see they came out of like mixing bowls and things like that. And take some scissors and we're going to make our own confetti. So you can, you can pour these to make specific colors, or you can just use the colors from your stash. And you want a mix. You can see just in these flakes, you have some darker blue areas and some lighter blue areas. And you want the pieces to be completely randomly shaped. Here's some really dark blue. Let's get some of those in there. I think it's the mix of colors that really makes it look great in the end. And they're flying everywhere. All right, here's some white. Let's cut it this way, and then cut it this way. Two cuts in one. I'm just trying to keep it random. And finally, red. And I have a live example of a bowl. This is a bowl that I used for a previous class. I kind of um, cured it in place. That's not completely cured. Let's put it under there. And okay, this one has some glitter in it. That looks cool. A 
but it cuts very easily with scissors. I mean, you could bang it with a hammer if you want to get some like rage out. <laughs> Feel free. There we go. Let's clean up a little bit here. You guys still with me? I'm sorry about the portrait view. I didn't want to hang up on you guys and come back. All right, let's bring in our mold. So here's a good use of tweezers if you need them, or you can grab them with your fingers, which I think I might end up doing. And I'm just going to start kind of opening up and placing in all of these little bits. And you, you do need quite a lot of the bits to make an impact. So I might not have cut quite enough that I need, but this is just a demonstration. Have any of you tried UV resin before? Or do we have a bunch of newbies with us? Um, a question in the chat asked, um, you don't need a clear layer first. You could, you could put a clear layer down there first, but I, um, I wanted to be able to get my finger in there and kind of place these exactly where I want them to go. So that's the only reason why I didn't put a layer of resin in. We're going to add the, the resin together. I did see a question come up about safety precautions. First of all, make sure that you are working in a well-ventilated room. If you have sensitive skin, if you have, you know, if you've had issues with um, chemicals, other resins, anything um, giving you a problem with your skin, then please wear gloves as well and or a respirator. That doesn't hurt. I, I've been working with this material for many years and I, just, I don't wear gloves. I just go for it. And I haven't had any issues. All right. So this is what we have a dry mold with confetti in it. And now we're going to go in with our resin. So I filled it probably about halfway and I'm going to give it little gentle squeezes. And the reason I do that, I can also go in with a wood stick. The reason I do that is because I put these confetti pieces in first and I just want to make sure that I don't have any air trapped underneath them, like where the resin isn't flowing. So that is why I kind of poke at it, squeeze it. That just makes sure that these pieces are fully encapsulated in the resin and there aren't any voids. And also because it's clear, I can lift it up and see if I have areas where I have too many, which it looks like I do. So I'm going to scooch some of these around. And then I'm ready to fill it up. And we usually get a question about bubbles. Bubbles are a real issue with other types of resin, like epoxy resin, AB resin, because the process of mixing it creates bubbles. But bubbles aren't so much of an issue with UV resin. Usually if you have a bubble, it's because it's, it's trapped air, um, not because it's a bubble that was made through the stirring or curing process. All right, I'm gonna lift this up, take a look at it from underneath. I still feel like I have too much confetti on this side. So let me move some of this around.
All right, we're still not filled up all the way. I'm probably two thirds of the way filled. So let's keep going. And the goal here is we wanna fill this channel completely 100% to the top. And I'm just moving it around so I can see. It becomes a little difficult to see. You're probably feeling that right now because we're working with a clear product and putting it in a clear mold. So I, you know, you want to make sure that you're getting it to the top, but not overflowing. So the resin, once it cures, it doesn't expand. It stays the exact same size, but maybe shrinks about less than 5%, I would say. So again, just kind of squeezing to see if I have any air bubbles in there and making sure I have it to the top. I can see I still have like a channel here that doesn't have any resin in it. And where you do have, I have a couple bubbles formed here. You can poke at those and just get rid of them. Go away, you. If you can't get rid of them that way, well, that one went away. You can try to scoop them up and out of there. This one big bubble being stubborn. There it goes. Okay, and if you have overdone it a little bit, I see an area here where a little extra resin, I can kind of remove that before curing. It just makes my job easier later, less sanding, less perfecting it after the cure. If you see any little bubbles, you can get those out, pop them. All right, my last look at it before we cure. All right, I think we're just ready to go. I can mess with it forever, uh, but let's uh, let's go ahead and cure it. So I bring my light in, and this one I'm going to let go for a while because I want to let that go for at least three or four minutes, I think. Just because it's a larger piece, something like this uses a lot of resin. Looks like I did have a little spill over here. I prefer to not try to mop that up with a paper towel. I'd much rather just have it cure onto the silicone and just peel it off. And it's a lot easier that way. All right, let's move this off to the side. And while that's curing, we're going to start on our next project here. And that is this keychain. It's the same shape repeated three times, but I'm just going to show you how to make one of these stars. So that star shape comes from this mold, which is kind of just miscellaneous shapes. We've got like a unicorn, a cat. Turn that back on and rotate. And so this shape is the one that we're going to use. And I have my leftover blue from the first project from the ring. I'm going to give that a little stir just to make sure that that has not settled. And let's pour that directly into the star. So you'll notice at the top of the star, and in fact, at the top of several of the shapes in this mold, there's a little silicone peg. And that peg is there to create a hang hole. See these little pegs here? All of these shapes have a peg. Not every mold has a peg shape at the top. Um, that's because you know people use things in different ways. You can see that the resin that's on my work surface is starting to cure even though it is far, well, not far from the lamp. It's not directly under the lamp, but just the 
the light kind of spills out in all directions. So my bowl that I was using to mix, I kind of move it off to the side out of the range of it. And we're gonna do a little stacking here because I want both of these to cure at the same time. So let's see if we can't get both of them in there. All right. This isn't fully cured yet. But let me get this part out of the way. All right, so let's let that cure. And while it does, I'll show you some options for creating bangles. And this I like to show to show the versatility of resin and what else you can use it for. So these are all different bangles that we've made. This one uses seed beads that are just sprinkled inside the mold and then the resin is poured in. Very cool. This one, candy sprinkles from the grocery store. This one are little fruits. These are polymer clay slices. And you see these, this is what they look like in the store. Come in a little wheel. You can place them down inside there. This is super cute for summer. And then finally, this one, these are actually little flower buds. And we just put them down inside there and add clear resin. So endless possibilities. There's almost nothing that doesn't work in resin. Um, the things that don't work in resin, it's easier to say what doesn't work than rather what does because any uh, wood, glass, plastic, sand, shell, um, any almost any material, wood that you can think of works well if you put it inside resin, including paper, stickers, fabric. Uh, gosh, the list goes on and on and on. All right, I'm just moving these things around because I want to make sure that I'm getting them. All right, and so when that star comes out, here's what we're going to do next. When that star comes out, it's going to have this top hole already in it from the silicone peg that's attached to the mold. We, because we are stacking three stars together, we need to create this hole down here. So we have a top and bottom to, to add our jump rings, okay? The way we do that is with a hand drill. This is also everything that we're selling, sorry, everything that we are using is sold at Michael's in the jewelry making department. Um, under the UV resin brand. And so this hand drill, it just fits into your hand and it swivels like this. And that is how manually you can twist this and um, create a hole where you need it to be. I'm just kind of checking this. Maybe I want to flip that one over. I want to twist that around. And while we do that, I'm going to do a little bit of show and tell here. So this class is focused on using the UV resin with molds. Through molds, you can make earrings, charms for bracelets, pendants for necklaces, um, rings, keychains, bangle bracelets. This is an example of an earring that we made and we used little bits of dried flowers in all different colors. These are just beautiful. So all of these projects that we're talking about today use molds. There is another very popular way to work with UV resin and that is with bezels. So let me show you some bezel pieces here. So this is a bezel so you it has a frame here's another bezel these are two dried flower pieces that we made this one's really deep this one's not so deep but this is called a bezel 
And it's a little different technique that you need to work with bezels. But this is, I would say, maybe the second most popular way of working with UV resin, with the most popular way being silicone molds. All right, so I'm gonna leave this on. I can feel this is still slightly warm. I did get resin um, all over here, but this peels off so easily to clean it. And I'm right now I'm looking at it, I'm kind of squeezing it. I just want to make sure that it's cured. And I can already see an area here where I wasn't so careful and I did get an air bubble right here, but we'll see if we can fix that. I would feel more comfortable putting that in for another minute. Let's check up on our star. Here's our blue star. Let me see if I can pop him out. That's what it looks like. Has a little bit of extra material here that I can just go in with my thumbnail, kind of pull that off. It, it wants to separate in the right spot, if that makes, makes sense to you. So that's why instead of using fancy equipment, I just use my thumbnail. And so you can see the hole that's been created here at the top. And now I need to make one down here. So here's my hand drill. I place that where I want it to go, right here. And I can already feel just pressing on this that it's not fully cured. For dark colors, that might happen um, where the outside is cured and ready to go. But there's still a little bit of liquid on the inside that that light hasn't hit yet. So before I drill into it, I'm going to put that under the light a little bit longer. So you always want to touch and feel and look very closely at your pieces and they will reveal what's going on. Let's take a look at this one. So if I start pulling this, you can see it's done. Whenever I'm demolding a large piece like this, I do want to wait until it is cured completely. Because what can happen with a large piece in the demolding process, if it is still warm, like I can feel that this is warm. When I pull this out of there, it might bend it slightly. And I don't want to bend anything. So I want to wait just a little bit until this is a little more rigid. And it'll it's only soft now because it is warm. So let's let it cool down. And in the meantime, we can do some more show and tell. Here's some molded pieces that we did for a Christmas class. And this shows how you can use different colors inside one mold. This is an example of four colors. Here's three colors. And then we added this little shape at the top and that becomes like your earring topper. And that's what goes through your ear. You can add metal pieces afterwards, and this earring piece is added with just more UV resin. Using this as an adhesive and curing that in place is a very powerful adhesive. I love these, these earrings. We made this for a class last summer, and it was all clouds. And so we lightly tinted it in blue. And these clouds are actually made from soap, from white soap that we put in the microwave for about eight seconds. And it kind of puffs it up. And we put it in resin and made an earring out of it. I love that. There's another simple earring with the seed bead technique. This earring came out of the heart-shaped mold and we sprinkled a bunch of seed beads in there inside the mold and then popped it out and we can add this piece here to turn it into an earring just by sticking that on with more resin. All right, so this is still warm. So let's just kind of put this to the side. I want that to cool completely because I don't want my bangle to get bent if it's still warm. All right, so we don't have a lot of time left for this project, but I wanna show you the technique 
that uses this project. So first, let me move this off to the side because I don't want that UV light getting here. This is what we're making. This comes from this mold, this little square here. And we're gonna use a technique of stringing seed beads and placing them very, very precisely within the mold. And molded pieces, as I mentioned before, the good side is underneath here. And this is the back side of it. This will always be the front and this will always be the back. So when we're creating this flag, we need to do it backwards. And in fact, this is the pattern that we use. And this flag uses eight rows of, rows of seed beads and they are placed in this way with the flag upside down. All right, so this is what I'm using to remember that. And let's bring our seed beads in. These are size 11 seed beads, red, white, and blue. And to help us along, we are gonna use some fishing line, also known in the jewelry world as monofilament or illusion cord. This is the brand that we love, Beetalon, and it's probably very hard to see on camera, but there is a string here. I'm just gonna cut maybe a eight inch, seven inch piece this is just, I'm using this as a tool to line up my seed beads. So, so I need to put them onto the string in the order, in this order. Okay, so this is my pattern that I'm going for. So the first thing I'm gonna string on here is this bead, this blue bead because I'm going to string it on and it's going to move furthest to the right. So the first thing that goes on is blue. And here's where you might need to get your magnifying glasses out because it is these beads are tiny. But just to recommend how to do this, always use the cord as a needle. So I'm using it as a needle and I'm picking up the seed bead. Like that. Okay, oops, I already messed up my pattern. I needed a white one. It's easier to do it this way instead of picking up that bead with your fingers and trying to string it on. All right, there's my first two beads. And now I need another blue one. If you have a beading needle, you can absolutely use that if that helps you pick these up. I'm having a heck of a time just because of my eyes, but we can do it. We got it, we got it. I'm stringing all the beads in that row. Okay, I'm breaking my, my uh, what I just told you guys because I'm just struggling getting that in here. If I do it this way, I can get it closer to my eyeballs. <laughs> Nope. Now these are glass seed beads. They are going to vary slightly in size. Seed beads, the making of seed beads is actually a fascinating process, but it's very handmade. And they are just slightly different in width and in height. So the pattern that I'm using, you may have to adjust based on the mold that you're using and based on the seed beads that you're using. All right, but there's my first five. You can see the pattern of three blue, two, two white. And now I need to string on six red. So I'm doing these all, everything I need for that row, I'm doing it at the same time. Also a great tool, if you like to use seed beads, you might wanna invest in a bead spinner. 
and that is just a great way to string things onto onto cord. Let's see if I can take this off camera and move it along. All right, making progress. Are you guys still with me? I also think what I'm going to do is cut a fresh tip off of my illusion cord just because if it was a little frayed, it'll make it harder to get through the center of these beads. Make sure that they are not going to fall off the other side of your cord. If you're worried about that, here's where using scotch tape also comes in handy. I'm going to tape this side of that cord so none of those beads are going to fall off the back end while I'm trying to put them on the front end. Okay, two more red beads. I am having a heck of a time seeing this. Please don't tell me it's time for bifocals, guys. I don't want to hear it. <laughs> okay. All right, so here's our first row. We have our pattern going here. Now I'm going to place this here in the mold and just do a size check. And I can see that. Maybe I want to add one more red. Like I said, these seed beads um, do vary in size. So you are going to have to kind of take this pattern and work with it, depending on the size of your seed beads. OK, so now I have all of these together. And this is where they're going to go, right here at the top. In fact, I want to place them above where that silicone peg is. That's where they're going to go. And how we do it is we're going to lay down some resin. Just along that top edge. And I'll carefully lay this I'm using my thumbnails to keep those together. Carefully lay this in place. kind of pressing down, I can kind of take a wood stick and get it down inside there. And once you have them placed exactly where you want them to go, we can hold it with the wood stick and we are gonna take this string out. So this string was just temporary to get them all lined up in a nice row. Let's pull that all the way through slowly and then perfect it. Just going to make sure that those are all the way down in. Trying to be very careful not to disturb them. And that's our first row. All right. And then you keep going. Next row is a very similar row. I am not going to do that whole process because of how hard it is to see these seed beads. But I think that you get the gist of it. Once you have all eight rows in here, only then will you cure it. So it's going to stay in its liquid form until then. All right, so that's how you can build up patterns. It may be easier also 
if you don't want to do a pattern, just to do kind of random, um, random red, white, and blue. That would also look really cool. But this is how you do a flag pattern. All right. So let's, we're jumping back here. We're jumping back to our other pieces. First, here's our star. All right, that feels nice and firm to me. Let's go ahead and get that hole where it needs to be. Now this bit that I have on this hand drill is a little bit of a larger bit. I believe this is three millimeters. You don't need it to be actually that, that thick. You can see the resin just kind of flakes out of there. And that's what you have. I'm going to use my tape trick to clean up all these. But keep in mind, these little pieces, this is usable resin that you can put down inside and use as confetti in another piece. So you can keep that. All right, let's take a look at our bangle here. So it is has mostly cooled, and I'm just kind of loosening it from the side here and pulling that out. And this is what we have right out of the mold. You can see I have a little extra resin here. Let's flip it over. So this is the beautiful side. This is the top side, or well, in the mold, it was the bottom side. When I flip it over, this is the imperfect side. So you may be left with some sharp bits, some extra resin. Let's see if we can just, yep, we can just peel that off. This little extra bit here. And if you're left with kind of a channel here, um, always go in with more resin to fill that up. I'm not going to go around the whole thing, but you would fill it around the whole piece and cure it. All right, so let me just bring this in. Okay, thank you so much for staying with me to the end of this class. I'm sorry for the technical difficulties that I had. Um, I hope that you do join us again for our next UV resin class. We do these every month. We also teach classes on polymer clay jewelry making. And we hope that you join us. Um, the last question here in the chat that I'm seeing is how do you polish after you sand? Um, really, there's only two ways of doing that. Sanding with increasingly higher, higher levels of grit up to like a thousand grit helps you to polish. Beyond that, the best method that I have is to use a top coat of the UV resin. Use a top coat with an old brush and that will get you that shiny, perfect glass-like finish on top. All right. So thank you so much for being here with us. Thank you so much for your questions in the chat. I hope you come back next time and check us out. Thank you so much.